Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And uh, this is uh, the State of the Saints podcast. And I want to say to everybody, thank you for checking us, checking out the podcast. And this is the post-game edition. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Saints' victory over the Carolina Panthers on today by a score of 27 to 24. And the New Orleans Saints, we all know that the Saints has – some limitations to say the least. Uh, you have two of the best receivers on the Saints team, the number one and number two receivers, Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, respectively. Uh, they were out of this game. Uh, Michael Thomas dealing with a hamstring and a high ankle sprain. And you also have Emmanuel Sanders, who was te- who tested positive earlier in the week for COVID-19. So he's in, uh, you know, COVID protocols right now. Uh, he's social distancing on trying to get himself well to be back with the team. But the New Orleans Saints on today, they weathered the storm. And, you know, I must say about uh, this game, uh, I think that all the people out there that have been criticizing Drew Brees, uh, this isn't the game for you to criticize him. Um, And I really honestly believe that uh, if the Saints probably had a different quarterback, I don't think things would have ended up being the way that they were. Uh, You have a guy who's been in the league for about 20 years, been in the system for 15 And it seems like to me, no matter who you put out there, uh, Drew Brees is going to put them in a position to succeed. And uh, as long as he's the quarterback, the Saints still have an opportunity to win. Uh, The Saints did some good things in this game offensively. uh, I think the balance between them running a football and passing a football was good. Uh, I think that the first drive that the Saints had uh, was masterful. I think they took about nine minutes on the clock and it was about 13 or 14 plays. Um, that's that's the type of stuff that you want to see out of the New Orleans Saints that that is the type of uh, stuff that you script up at the beginning when you do what you like what they like to call their first 15 plays those plays are scripted Um, so want to give a special shout out to the New Orleans Saints offensive staff uh, who burned the midnight oil later in the week uh, especially when they found out about Emmanuel Sanders in order for them to uh, get the right game plan uh, another person that stood out is the kid Mark Crass Callaway out of Tennessee. Uh, he wears number 12, which a lot of people uh, know about. And we all know what number 12 means to uh, the Saints organization. All the great years and production we got out of former uh, New Orleans Saint great uh, Marcus Coaston. But Mark Crass Callaway, he was channeling his inner Marcus Coaston. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, great plays from this kid. Uh, Carolina played a lot of zone. And I'm looking at this kid. He's a rookie. He goes out there and he's finding the soft spots in these zones and, and, and he's making plays. Uh, he had about, we had about eight catches, about 74 yards in this game. So, I mean, he really did a good job. He ended up leaving the game he had a little bit of an ankle injury, but he talked after the game and he said that, you know, he got a little dinged up, but he should be okay. So that's, that's a positive sign right there. I'm happy for the kid. I'm um, glad that he got opportunity to uh, spread his wings and and really show the who that nation what he's made of. And, you know, I'm I'm really excited about what I'm seeing out of these young players, man. What I've seen out of uh, Deontay Harris, uh, what I've seen out of Traquan Smith, uh, Austin Carr caught a pass and Marquez Callaway. I mean, he's out there doing their thing. Uh, can you imagine when Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders come back, the type of offense the Saints can have? And I feel like, you know, in the absence of Michael Thomas, it actually did the Saints some good. It gave the Saints an opportunity to see some of these younger players and to call these young kids numbers in order for you to develop some type of relationship with them. I really don't feel like the Saints would have or would have had the type of relationship that they have with Callaway. I don't think Breeze would have the relationship he has with him or has with Carr or has with Jawan Johnson or have with Traquan Smith or even Emmanuel Sanders of that matter. I think that because Michael Thomas was out, the Saints had to find a way to get other guys involved to compensate for the loss of Michael Thomas because we know how big of a a deal he is um, when it comes to the Saints offense. So I think it actually did the Saints some good. And I'm happy that some of these young kids stepped up. I mean, Deontay Harris got his first receiving touchdown. I mean, we all know what he can do on special teams. He did he, he did a lot of great things, man. I've seen a lot of dig routes and stuff like that, that he was out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was out there catching the ball really well. Uh, he running his route. Uh, he got some really quick feet. Uh, so this offense really looked good. But I transitioned to the defense. Uh, this defense, 
had very little to do with this game whatsoever. And the success that the Saints have, they have very little to do with this victory. And quite frankly, who that nation, I'm going to just be honest. I'm just kind of tired of this defense. Um, I understand that this is the defense that's going to be presented to us week after week for the 2020 season. But I think it's about time after the season is over for the Saints to really evaluate what they actually have on the defensive side of the ball. Because it just seems to me like guys are dealing with tackling, guys are dealing with technique uh, in the secondary, guys are turning their heads around, guys are whiffing on tackles, guys are making business decisions, guys are thinking about themselves more than they're actually thinking about the team. And I think that the Saints need to look at some of their coaching staff as well because these guys have been in this system for quite some time. These guys have implemented this system for quite some time, and we're still dealing with the same issues as Saints fans. We're still being subjected to mediocrity uh, on this defense. We're still being subjected to guys getting beat deep and looking at each other like, oh, I thought that was your man. I thought that was your man. We're still watching people like Marcus Williams make bad reads. We're still watching people, you know what I'm saying, just be out of position and getting burnt. Uh, I just think that it's time for a change, man. It's time for a makeover. I want this team to not only be defined by offense, but I want them to be defined by defense as well. Because this team has been too good, been too good, too long for them to still be dealing with some of the issues. And we always say, oh man, they're gonna turn a corner. Oh, it's gonna get better. Oh, it's gonna work out. And it never does. It, it never does. Uh, right now, I'm gonna pull up uh, some of the questions that the Who That Nation actually has. Uh, normally, I do the shows live, but of course, this show isn't live. So I, I asked the Who That Nation uh, to submit some questions. So what I'm gonna do right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, look up some of the questions that uh, that people have. So uh, just bear with me, folks. Um, I'm asking people to send some of these questions, just trying to look them up, uh, just try to see what the Who That Nation has to say uh, about this game. Uh, but in the meantime, I just want to say uh, thank you to everybody that checked out the live earlier. Uh, had a little bit of uh, some, I won't say technical difficulties. Uh, I was here with my son and I wasn't able to, uh, I, I didn't feel comfortable being on camera. And, you know what I'm saying, not being able to watch him. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't feel comfortable with that. So, you know, my family comes first and everything like that. So, you know, I want to go ahead and I put that out there right now. Uh, Quisha says, this is the first game I've seen Teddy Bridgewater take a uh, risk and air it out. He's usually conservative. Yeah, I, I think that this was a game right here that I think uh, the, the Carolina Panthers organization knew that this game meant a lot to Teddy. So they wanted to put all their skills on display. And on um, that pass that he threw to DJ Moore, I mean, it was something special, man. Like, uh, I think that was a really good deep ball that he threw. I mean, honestly, dude was wide open. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty easy pass to throw. But nevertheless, man, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, you can tell he was playing inspired. Uh, he's a guy that, that really doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And he was taking what the defense gave him. And he was doing a really good job out there, man. So, um, a lot of people that support Teddy Bridgewater, I'm pretty sure they still have that same type of love. And a lot of them are like, man, he could be doing this for us. But I, I take I, I come away from this game uh, thinking about Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Brees. I think we're all winners in that regard, right? I mean, I understand that Drew Brees probably going to be his last season and Teddy Bridgewater's career is going to uh, flourish and he's going to continue to play. But I don't think there's – really a, a loser in this type of situation uh, the saints uh got drew Brees, a, a steady hand a guy who you know for a fact is going to put the saints in the best position to win and the carolina panthers got teddy bridgewater man a guy that, that has all the tools to be a really good quarterback so i think both teams won in that regard uh dexter says great game love how callaway did and murray brought the pain to him yeah, Latavius Murray really did good, man. Uh, Latavius Murray was running with really good pad level. Uh, he broke out a couple runs. Uh, he also caught a pass in a passing game. Uh, I really like what I've seen out of Latavius Murray today. And Alvin Kamara, uh, he should be considered uh, for league MVP. And I, I get it. I know how the NFL works, right? They, if you're not a quarterback, uh, you know what I'm saying, then they don't seem to have that type of love for you unless you like a running back that ran for, you know, Eric Dickerson type yards or broke Eric Dickerson record or something like that. They don't even try to mention you. They always try to give the award to the quarterback because they say the quarterback is the best position or the most important position on the field. 
but at the same time, it's about being valuable. And I can't think of a more valuable player to his team than Alvin Kamara. The only difference is the quarterback uh, gets the ball every time because they snap it to the quarterback. But if you look at Alvin Kamara's production and the way that he's playing and how the Saints are using him in a passing game, in a running game, they even had him throwing the ball to Drew Brees for God's sakes today. Uh, I think this guy should be considered for league MVP. And anybody that don't feel that way, I, I question your credentials uh, as a member of the media. Real talk. Uh, let's see. Offense showed up today. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the offense did show up today. Uh, Justin says, TJ, I'm uh, I'm here. Our defense has to do better tackling and better in coverage. Get more pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, we, we definitely got to get more pressure on the quarterback. Uh, the, the Carolina Panthers offensive line whooped the Saints front for it today. Look, I know that Marcus Davenport got that winning uh, sack and – that, that knocked him out of field goal range. And, man, shots out to Sly, man. Sly had a field goal kicker, Carolina. I mean, he was inches away from kicking a 65-yard field goal. But, you know, that, that play knocked the guys out of field goal range. But, nevertheless, uh, the Saints' uh, defense, they, they got to get better. But I don't see that happening. I, I really don't. I, I really don't see that happening. Uh, Fire Dennis Allen and Aaron Glenn and trade Marcus Williams. Uh, first off, uh, as far as trading Marcus Williams, uh, I don't feel like you'll get uh, a box of Cracker Jacks for this guy right now, the way that he's playing. Look, I think y'all need to understand how trade works, right? Uh, a team wants to trade for a guy if he feels like that guy actually has some value. And right now, Marcus Williams, even though I like him a lot, I think he's I think he's going to be really good. Um, I think that the Saints defensive scheme doesn't really do him any justice. And I really think that, you know, the Saints having a rough time actually turning him and building him into a a defensive player that he can be. Uh, But, you know, I don't know, man. That's not how trade works, okay? You got to have some type of value. And no team in their right mind is going to trade for Marcus Williams for nothing, okay? Maybe they can call him up and be like, man, you know, I got this bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddle that I just bought through the – when I went through the drive through this morning before I came to the facility. And if you want that um, for Marcus Williams, I'll be willing to give you that. But right now, man, that's not going to happen, man. A team, you know, you got to catch a, you got to catch a coach, uh, a coach pretty desperate uh, to try to uh, give you anything for Marcus Williams right now. Uh, Casey says Callaway walked off limping. I hope he's okay. We can't afford to lose another receiver. Like I said, uh, he talked at, in a, at the press conference. He said he was fine. He said he was fine. I trust the fact that he's fine. I trust the fact that, you know, he's probably going to be playing in the next game. So no doubt about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at some stats right now, man, see what the Saints did uh, stat-wise. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and acknowledge Drew Brees. He was 29 of 36, 287 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, You had Taysom Hill, one touchdown, I mean, one touchdown, one pass, zero yards. Uh, Let's address this while I'm thinking about it. What the hell is Sean Payton doing? I mean, Drew Brees, once again, wheeling and dealing, doing his thing, getting the ball down the field, making the right reads, putting guys in a position to succeed. He was red hot. Even the biggest Drew Brees hater right now was appreciating Drew Brees' greatness on today. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, for no rhyme, reason, or sense whatsoever, in comes Taysom Hill for that flat pass uh, to Josh Hill for zero yards. Like, give me a break, man. And then it only just made the Saints be behind the eight ball. Now, the Saints did convert on third down, that you know what I'm saying, during that drive, but I don't know what Sean Payton be thinking, man. I, I really don't. I don't know what the hell he be thinking. But Taysom Hill right now, man, is not it, okay? I mean – He can run a little bit of RPO. We seen him actually convert a first down and almost score. But come on, man. If Drew Brees is cooking, like, leave him in the kitchen, all right? No need for Taysom to come up in there trying to put salt and pepper on on the the well-seasoned, good, perfect uh, gumbo that Drew Brees is cooking up, okay? Ain't no need for him to come up in there with no cayenne pepper and no no black pepper, you know what I'm saying, If, if, if Drew Brees is out there making the perfect gumbo. Don't make no sense whatsoever. Uh, Sean got to fix that. Uh, Alvin Kamara, 14 carries for 83 yards. Latavius Murray, 11 carries for 47 yards. Alvin Kamara averaged about six yards a carry, and Latavius Murray, 4.3. 
Um, once again, Callaway, eight catches, 75 yards. Alvin Kamara, eight catches, 65 yards. Trey Quine, four catches, 54. Deontay Harris, four catches for 46. Jared Cook, three catches, 32 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, of course, Deontay Harris, he scored a touchdown with the four and 46 that he had. And, uh, you know, you got Latavius Murray with nine yards. Uh, Austin Carr with six. Uh, so this, this pretty much has been a, a good offensive performance by the Saints. Uh, the, leading the, the defense, uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, five tackles, uh, none assisted. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore had four tackles. Marcus Williams had three tackles. Uh, so a- Azzalone had three. I mean, so in Davenport, he had the lone sack in this game. So the Saints going to have to clean up a lot of things defensively. And and I don't know if they're going to be able to do those things or not. Uh, they got the Chicago Bears coming up. That's going to be a tough game. Uh, we all know the Chicago Bears are one of the best teams in the league right now. So the Saints better uh, take these guys serious. Uh, Nick Foles is a quarterback that can light you up. Uh, the Chicago Bears defense is flying all around the field. We all know that the Saints kind of struggle when they go up against teams that have athletic linebackers. Uh, we all know that the Chicago Bears have that. So we're going to be talking about that game as, as the week go on. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the Chicago Bears, New Orleans Saints game. Uh, but, you know, all in all, I mean, a win is a win. All right. The Saints are four and two. Uh, you know, I think that it would be a little bit more demoralizing if the Saints were actually losing and um, having some of these struggles. But they're finding ways to win. And that's what good teams do. They find ways to win. And you can't be too upset with that, uh, even though, you know, some of the things that happen every single week frustrate you as a fan because you want the Saints to uh, to win it all. You want the Saints to win it all. And you don't want those little nagging issues to cause the Saints yet again in a game that matters the most. But uh, go ahead and stay tuned, and hopefully they'll be able to play a little bit better. Hopefully they'll be able to make the adjustments, and some of these younger players, you know, offensively will be able to step up and use this momentum in the game against Carolina going forward. But I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast post-game show. Uh, Be sure to check us out on Facebook, facebook facebook.com, search The State of the Saints podcast, uh, youtube.com search the state of the saints podcast and previous episodes are available on itunes spotify iHeartRadio, and anchor fm thank you so much enjoy the rest of your night and like always all i gotta say is who that